Now this part here, we will be looking at the centrifugal clutch. Now, as you know from the word centrifugal, that means the clutch here is actually operated by means of frictional force and centrifugal force. Okay. Now the centrifugal clutch are usually incorporated into the motor pulleys. I repeat once more, the centrifugal clutches are usually incorporated into the motor pulleys. It is consists of a number of shoes on the inside of a rim of the pulley. The outer surface of these shoes are covered with frictional materials. Now these shoes which can move radially in guides are held against something which we call boss or spider on the driving shaft by means of springs. Now we look at the construction of the centrifugal clutch. Now this would be your centrifugal clutch here and this. Now so when you refer to this diagram here, you can see there are springs. And this part here, this part here, we call them as the shoes. The shoes here. The shoes are attached to the central shaft by means of springs. These springs here. So when the shaft rotates, now this is the pulley. This is actually the internal uh, surface of the pulley. And this is actually the pulley from here. You can see. This is the pulley. Most of you can read drawings already done by now, right? So now this is a pulley. So when this shaft here rotates, what happens is the shoes, the four shoes here, will be thrown outwards radially, radially, R A D I A L L Y, by means of centrifugal force. By means of centrifugal force. The greater the rotational speed of this shaft, then the greater would be the centrifugal force pushing the shoe outwards, away from the center of the shaft. So when the shoes are being pushed outwards, okay, in the radial direction, it will come into contact with the internal surface of the pulley that is here. Okay, so when the shoes come into contact with the internal surface of the pulley rim, the clutch and gauge. Okay, so in other words, that means the clutch here engage or disengage is actually controlled by the speed, the rotational speed of the shaft, the driving shaft. So for example, I will show you here in this diagram. So when the shaft rotates and the pulley also rotates as well. So when the shaft rotates, it actually throws the shoes here, the shoes here, radially outwards. Okay, this we call the guide, the guides. Okay, and here you have the boss or the spider we call. So we keep hold the guides and the uh, springs to which the springs are attached. So in actual practice or in real life, uh, we don't use uh, close coil helical springs like that. It's just for uh, showing you okay, how it works, how it works. So when the shaft rotates, when this shaft here rotates, this is called the hub, okay, the hub. Okay, this uh, the boss and the hub. Okay, so the spring and the mass will be thrown outwards like that. Will be thrown outwards like that. Okay, so when it is being thrown outwards, it's actually by, okay, it is being thrown outwards by means of the centrifugal force, by help of the centrifugal force. And we know that centrifugal force is defined as, or the formula for centrifugal force is mass, radius, okay, speed, power 2. That means mr omega squared. m is the mass of the shoe. r is the radius from the center of the shoe to the center of the shaft. I repeat once more. From the center of the shoe to the center of the shaft. That is the radius r. Okay, from here to here. Okay? So that is the radius. Now, so the centrifugal force which pulls this outwards, 
That means the force will be acting outwards from here to outwards. But the spring, when the spring extends, you have another force that is acting on the shoe. That is the spring force. So when the spring extends, it will tend to restore back to its original length. You see? It will tend to restore back to its original length. Follow? So that means from the shoe, this point, you will have another force acting inwards like this actually. You have a force acting outwards and a force acting inwards like that. Okay? So if you take this outward force minus this inward force, you have a net force, correct? So this net force here depends on whether the centrifugal force is greater or the restoring force is greater. So if the centrifugal force here, which is acting outwards, is greater than the inward restoring force, then the clutch will engage. If the centrifugal force, which is acting outwards, is lesser than the inner force, that means the force which is acting inwards, the restoring force, then the clutch will disengage or the clutch will not move. Okay, it remains inwards. Okay, follow? So, first condition is when the centrifugal force which is acting outwards is greater than the inward force of the restoring force of the spring. First case, clutch engage. Second case is when the centrifugal force acting outwards, which is less than the inner force, which is acting inwards, the restoring force, then the clutch will not engage. Now, the third case is when the centrifugal force is equal to the restoring force. That means it's equal to the spring force. Then we say the shoe will be floating away uh, somewhere around here. Almost touching the drum of the pulley. Almost touching the inner surface of the drum. Okay? If Fc, the centrifugal force, is equal to is equal to Fs, that is the frictional force, then the shoe will be floating somewhere around here, but not engaged yet. But it is about to engage, we say. It is about to engage. Okay, it's about to engage when spring force is equal to centrifugal force. So here I've listed out case A, case B, and case C. Now case A. Now when you look at the blue arrow here, is the centrifugal force. The red arrow here represents the restoring force or the spring force. And the dark blue arrow here represents the net force. So in the first case, the case A, shaft rotating at low speed. The music shaft here is rotating at low speed initially, at the beginning, where Fs, that means the inward pull, inward pull will be greater than the outward pull. That means the outward force is less than the inward force. Follow? Spring force is the one that is acting inwards, the red color one. The shoe remain in position and no power being transmitted. Case A. Case B. As the speed of the shaft, that means when this start to, the speed of this shaft here start to increase. Okay, speed of the shaft increases. The centrifugal forces increase. That means this force here will increase because centrifugal force is actually, when you look at this, Centrifugal force is actually a function of this, the speed. The speed. This is the speed of the rotating shaft. So when the speed of the rotating shaft increase, this force here will increase, that is the centrifugal force. Okay? So as the speed of the shaft increases, the centrifugal forces increases as well. Until Fs is equal to Fc. Earlier Fs is greater than Fc, or Fc is less than Fs, then you have Fs equals to Fc when you increase the speed. And we know that Fs, spring force, is actually defined as spring stiffness multiplied by deformation. Centrifugal force is actually the product of mass radius and omega, that, uh, omega square, that is the speed of the shaft. So from here, you get this relationship here, here. Kx equals to mr omega squared because Fs is equal to Fc in this case, case B. Now we move to case C. 
Now, as the speed further increases, maybe to its maximum, the centrifugal forces, the centrifugal forces increase until now the spring force, that means the inner force now, is less than the centrifugal force. That means this force now is greater than this. So when this is greater than this, now I have a net force. And this net force is Fc minus Fs. So if Fc is greater than Fs, so if you take Fc minus Fs, it should be a positive magnitude. That means the value should be positive. So that means it is acting outwards already. So when it is acting outwards, now it is pulling the shoe forward. Furthermore, until it totally presses, until it presses, this now was touching, but not engaged yet. This is when it is pressing onto the surface of the pulley already. So when it press, this force here, this force here will cause frictional force between the surface of the pulley and the shoe. So this frictional force, which is acting in the opposite direction, is according to the rotation, uh, rotating shaft, the direction of rotation of the shaft. So this frictional, uh, frictional force or the tangential force multiplied by the radius of the pulley rim. This time is the radius of the pulley rim. Just now, this R here is actually the radial distance between the center of the shaft to the center of the shoe. Now this time is the uppercase letter R, that is the radius of the pulley rim. So you have the tangential force multiplied by the radius of the pulley rim. You have the top transmission. Net top here. So net force is equal to Fc minus Fs. Centrifugal force is greater than F spring force now. And then this is the frictional force. Frictional force is actually equal to the product of coefficient of friction and normal force. The normal force is Fc minus Fs here. So friction will be, you have to take the normal force multiplied by the coefficient of friction, then you get the frictional force. And we know that torque is equal to tangential force. So this frictional force now has became the, this frictional force now has become the tangential force. Multiplied by the radius, so you get the torque. T-O-R-Q-U-E. And then multiply by this N here. This N here is actually the number of contact surface. So for a normal centrifugal clutch, you have four shoes. So you have one contact, two contact, three contact, four contact, where the shoes come into contact with the inner surface of the drum. So this is a torque transmitted formula for a centrifugal clutch. Okay, so now you see how it works. Sorry. Take care. Sorry. Now you see the first case. Okay. The shoe doesn't move. The second case, the shoe start to move. Okay. And the third case, you see, the shoe now is in contact with the inner surface of the pulley rib or it is actually pressing on the pulley rim. <coughs> Excuse me. This purple arrow here is actually referring to the frictional force. Because when the pulley rim and the shoes is rubbing against each other, it will create this frictional force. This Take this frictional force times this radius, you get the torque transmitter. Okay? So this is what you have. I hope you understand. Okay, the assignments or the tutorials, we will deal with it later. Uh, up to now, thank you very much. Okay? So these are the tutorials.